What's good everyone? My name is Mac and today we'll be looking at how to convert this closet from this to this. So let's get started. Alright, the whole project is divided into six steps. Step one, design and plan. In this section, we'll look at how do you design your closet, how do you choose your closet system options, and how do you visualize your future closet. Step two would be how do you demo and remove your old shelves. Step three, paint and touch-ups. Step four, how do you build the system? Step five, install. And step six, enjoy. Now to design your closet, you can either do it the old school way of using pen and paper, or you can go search IKEA PEX system on Google and get to their closet designer page. Now this designer allows you to set your dimensions for your closet and then resize it accordingly. Once you have done that, now you can start adding your cabinets. You can choose the color of the cabinets that you want. You can add multiple cabinets and, and the beauty of this is it will not let you add more cabinets based upon your size. So even if you want to jam more cabinets in, it won't let you because the size won't allow it, which is great. Now once you have done designing the cabinets, you can start adding accessories to it. You can add shelves, drawers, hangers, shoe racks. You can even choose the hardware that you want for your drawers. Once you have added everything, you can move things around to optimize your space. And then once you are satisfied, you can look at it in the 3D design to make sure everything looks good. Once you're ready, hit finalize and that will take you to the shopping cart page. The good thing about this page is it gives you an itemized list of things that you need to buy. If you're satisfied with what you need, you can directly order from here and IKEA would be able to ship the items to your home. By the way, I'm not affiliated to IKEA in any way. I just think it's a cool system to use. Anyway, for our personal preference, we went with closet made system from Home Depot. And that was just because it was available faster than IKEA system. Once we finalized our design, I jumped into the demo. Now, if your closet is builder grade like ours, you will need to take care of these very heavy particle bolt shelves. And the best way to do that is to start with the supports. Be very careful when you're taking out these supports because they have these three inch nails in them. I'm using a mallet and a pry bar here, which makes the job easy. Once you have taken out the supports, you will need to gently tap on the sides to take them out. This is pretty easy. Once you do that, now your top shelf is ready to come out. Just give it a light tap and then you should be able to take it out. Finally, take out the strip that was holding everything together. Gently pry on it and it should come off easy. You'll have to do this whole thing for the rest of your shelves so that you have a clean state to begin with. This is how my closet looks like when it is done. Next, you will need to remove the nails from the walls. Use a bent nose plier and use the leverage from the wall to gently pry them out. You will need to do that for the rest of the closet as well before you start painting. Once you're done with that, use a scraper to scrape off any loose paint or anything that is peeling off. That'll make your job easier in the next step when you're patching. I'm using a regular joint compound and a plastic scraper here for patching. And if you do a good job here, that reduces your effort when you have to sand. And if I didn't tell you yet, I hate sanding. Once you are done patching, use a high grit sandpaper to do the sanding. You could either use a 400 grit or a 220 grit sandpaper to do that. Sanding done. And now we are in a third step which is paint and touch-ups. Now before we paint, we need to cover up the area to avoid any paint spills. Now what you see me using here is a system that is used by professional painters where they load this roll into a roller machine to cover the walls. What I typically do is I just buy the refill packs for these because I don't have the machine and I use that to cover the area. This is fairly easy to use. You tape the wall and then you unfold the plastic to cover the area. And this is fairly cheap as well. I think it's less than 15 bucks or so. Now, since we had to do the touch-ups anyway, we decided to paint our closet. We went with light gray so that it gives a pop when you put white closets in front. Now, if you don't want to paint your closet, that's totally fine. You would just need to do touch-ups to get your paint ready and then jump into build. Now, here you see me unfolding the plastic and it's super cool the way it covers the whole closet. 
Now once you have covered the whole closet, you will probably need some painter's tape to stick the plastic down. You will probably need to cover your doors and other things that you don't want the paint on. In my case, we also have an electronics panel in the closet that I have to cover. And here is how it looks when it is all covered. Your closet is now ready for painting. Now for painting the closet, I'm going to be using a paint gun. Now if you don't have a paint gun, you can use a paint roller or a paint brush as well. The one that I'm using here is a paint ready system by Wagner. And the way it works is you have a bucket where you fill in the paint and thin the paint and then you have a gun which sprays through the nozzle. Now the paint that I'm using is a bare paint. It's a paint and primer in one. And the name of this particular shade is Rainmaster. Now if you're using a paint brush or a paint roller, make sure you look at the thinning requirements for the paint. When you're using a paint gun, you don't have to thin the paint as much. The other difference that I would think in terms of using paint gun versus a paint roller or paint brush is just the time. With the paint gun, I was able to paint the whole closet within about an hour. Also, in most cases, if you're painting using a paint gun, you probably don't need to do a second coat. Once you're done with the paint, let the paint dry, while you can jump into the fun part of the project, which is the bed. As I mentioned earlier, we decided to go with the closet made system. The IKEA PEC system is great, but IKEA was facing delivery delays due to the pandemic. There are other closet systems also in the market, apart from closet made. There's one called Closet Evolution, there's another one called Simply New. So do your research and pick the one that you like. Another thing to keep in mind is that each of these closet solutions will have multiple series. Now these series differ in prices as well as the quality of the material that you are buying. For example, Closet Made has an Impressions series and a Selective series. The Selective series is a cheaper one and the Impressions series is a little expensive but it has nicer drawer fronts, drawer handles and the overall build quality. And there's my little helper reviewing my work. Now the build itself is not very difficult. If you follow the instructions, you should get it right the first time. Most of these closet solutions are built the same way. Each cabinet has a bottom and a top. Now both of these are exactly the same, so you can build either one first. Once you have built both, you just need to join them together, one on top of the other, by using pins and towels. The included hardware would contain everything that you would need. Now, once you build the cabinet, don't install the shelves yet because it will be easier for you to set it up in your closet and then add the shelves. Once you have completed your build, you are in your next step, which is setup. Now, once you move the cabinets back into your closet, you can anchor them to the wall using the provided hardware. Now, in my case, there was a small issue. Because of the baseboards, I could not put the cabinet flush with the wall. So I decided to mark the width of the cabinet on the baseboards and cut a notch in the baseboards. This way I didn't have to rip out my baseboards and the cabinets fit snug in the notch. Now once that problem was solved, I had another challenge that I had to deal with. We had bought this half cabinet that we were looking to use, which didn't come with enough shelves. And because of the pandemic, I could not buy more shelves because they were out of stock. So we had to deal with that problem. The second problem that we had was when we initially designed the system, we decided to only have the rods and not put the top shelves. But when we built the system, it felt like it needed those top shelves. Now the issue was, there's no custom top shelves. They only come in specific sizes that you can buy. To solve both of these problems, I decided to buy a couple of melamine boards that could then be cut into the necessary lengths. That way you could make multiple top shelves as well as the shelves for the cabinets. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could buy a closet made top shelf and then have the big box store cut it for you. So that could be an option as well. 
The difference would be the price because a closet made board would probably cost you double the cost of the melamine board. You could typically pick up a melamine board 8 feet in length for about 15 bucks. So I got a couple of melamine boards here and I'm cutting them to length. I measured the top shelf length as well as the shelves that I needed for the cabinet and then used a chop saw to cut it. Now like I said earlier if you don't have a chop saw then you can also have the hardware store cut the boards as well. And here I am installing the cabinet shelf that I cut using cabinet pins that I got from Home Depot. And here is a quick view of the board that I got, the melamine board. This is a rubber made board which is about 12 inches in width and about 35 inches in length. So that's what I used to cut and use it as a top shelf for the cabinet that we are looking at. I used half inch screws to screw the board to the cabinet on the one side and on the other side I used a right angle bracket to screw the bolt to the wall. Now that this problem was solved, there was another one that I had to deal with. So the reason you see that the rod is missing from here, and I'm gonna have take this one out as well, is because we realized that the length of the rod, I think the distance between uh, these two walls there and there where the, the rod was, is about 76 inches and that was too long uh, without a support in the center. Um, now, to add that support, um, it created another challenge. The width that we had initially put the two, um, the distance from the wall, uh, this was sh too short for the support. So this length from this hook to the wall is about 14 inches whereas um, the distance from here to the wall um, was about 11 inches is what I had initially put the rod at. So that caused an issue uh, which meant that now I have to take out the clips from here. Um, I have to support uh, the rod uh, with this anchor uh, on the rod support column um, and um, and then move the rod out a little bit from about 11 inches or nine and a half inches to about 14 inches now at this point. Uh, I'm gonna be removing um, all the rods in the closet uh, and all the existing support, putting the shells on top and then moving these rods out by about a few inches. So in this case about from nine and a half inch to about 11 inches right there. So. Something to keep in mind uh, when you are thinking about how long your rod is going to be or how long your support is going to be. Uh, think about whether you would need to put a, a support like this and if yes, uh, how far out the support is from the rod um, uh, and then design accordingly and that was a miss from my part. Now that all the design issues were resolved, I went back to setting up the drawers, the shelves, the top shelves and the rods. For the installation, I just followed the instructions provided by a closet made solution. That may be different for the solution that you chose to install. In my case, I just had to anchor the cabinets to the wall. I followed that with another round of patching, sanding and little bit of paint touch ups. Once that was done, I was almost ready to enjoy my new closet. And here is the first view of the completed closet. We also decided to add some full length IKEA mirrors on both sides and some hooks to the sides of the cabinets. Time to enjoy your hard work. If you found this useful, 
please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more DIY content. And until next time, take it easy.